In this video, we will cover some basic concepts in order to prepare you for the study of antimicrobial techniques. Topics in this video will include the terminology of microbial control, microbial death, and mechanisms of action of antimicrobial agents. Before exploring the various means of physical and chemical control of microorganisms, we must examine the terminology utilized in reference to microbial control. These terms are likely to sound familiar to you, but may have been used incorrectly. Let's begin with the term sterilization. Sterilization is the removal of all microorganisms and viruses. In order to sterilize an object, the technique must be able to eliminate the most resistant of microorganisms. Prions, as we saw in Unit 3, are very resistant to heat, chemicals, and radiation. The destruction of prions requires a combination of chemicals and heat. Generally, when the word sterilization is used, it is assumed all microbial forms have been eliminated. However, many of the sterilizing techniques presented in this section will not eliminate prions. Therefore, in this section we assume that sterilization has been accomplished if endospores have been destroyed, and we make the assumption that prions are not present. If prions are suspected, then special measures must be taken, including discarding equipment as biohazardous material or using a combination of chemicals and heat based upon CDC guidelines. So again, for the purpose of our discussion, Endospores are the most resistant microbial form targeted by the antimicrobial techniques we will examine. If the technique effectively eliminates endospores, it is considered to accomplish sterilization. Chemicals capable of sterilization are known as sterilants. The techniques and chemicals utilized to accomplish sterilization are rather harsh and therefore are utilized on inanimate objects. The other terms we utilize do not indicate the removal of all microorganisms, but rather an attempt to establish an aseptic environment. An aseptic environment is one that is free of pathogenic microorganisms. So here our goal is not to eliminate all microorganisms, but rather focus on disease-causing microorganisms. Because sterilization eliminates all microorganisms, asepsis is accomplished. Disinfection is the removal of vegetative pathogens from inanimate objects. Disinfection may be achieved with techniques such as chemicals known as disinfectants, ultraviolet radiation, boiling water, or steam. Antisepsis, on the other hand, is the removal of vegetative pathogens on living tissues. Chemicals used for antisepsis are known as antiseptics. There are some chemicals that may act as disinfectants or antiseptics depending on the situation in which they are used. However, many of the chemicals used as disinfectants are simply too harsh to utilize on living tissues and therefore are only employed to disinfect inanimate objects. Examples of disinfection include the use of iodine to disinfect thermometers, placing food utensils or bottles in boiling water, and using a 5% bleach solution on a countertop. Examples of antisepsis include hand washing with germicidal hand soaps and preparing skin for surgery using iodine compounds. Degerming is a cleansing technique in which microorganisms are mechanically removed from living tissue. Degerming often involves the mechanical removal in combination with an antiseptic. An example is the use of an alcohol swab to scrub a site in preparation for an injection. Sanitization is a cleansing technique in which microorganisms are mechanically removed from inanimate objects. Sanitization removes debris, microorganisms, and toxins. Sanitization can be used in combination with disinfecting chemicals such as soaps, detergents, and bleach. The goal is to reduce microbial numbers to meet public health standards in order to reduce the likelihood of disease transmission. An example of sanitization is the washing of dishes by restaurants. As we move through our discussion of antimicrobials used both in the environment and in the body, we will encounter a number of other terms not covered in this section. 
that describe the extent to which the technique or chemical can control microorganisms. These terms share in common some suffixes. The suffixes side or sidle indicate that the chemical or technique is capable of destroying or inactivating a particular microbe. For example, bactericidal agents kill or destroy bacteria and microbicidal agents kill or destroy microbes. These terms do not indicate whether or not endospores are eliminated. Thus, the terms bactericidal and microbicidal do not indicate whether the technique is capable of sterilization. However, the term sporicidal suggests that the agent or technique is capable of eliminating endospores and thus is capable of sterilization. Other terms you may hear are viricidal, indicating inactivation of viruses, fungicidal, indicating the destruction of fungal hyphae, spores, and yeast. The suffixes stasis and static indicate that growth is inhibited but not necessarily killing the microorganism. The term bacteriostatic then would mean inhibition of bacterial growth. The methods of preserving bacteria in the lab setting for research are all bacteriostatic techniques. Those techniques included refrigeration, deep freezing, and lyophilization. Many of the chemicals used as antiseptics and drugs to control microorganisms in or on the body are microbostatic because microbicidal agents are generally too toxic for human cells. Thus, antimicrobial drugs act to inhibit microbial growth while the immune system destroys and eliminates the microbes. Just as we defined microbial growth based on changes in microbial populations, we will do the same with microbial death. Microbial death is accomplished when a technique or chemical has resulted in damage to the bacterial cell that prevents the cell from reproducing even when exposed to a suitable environment. Microbial cells that can no longer reproduce cannot contribute to microbial growth. When a microbial population is exposed to a microbicidal agent, the population does not die instantaneously. Many microbicidal agents target the metabolic activities of the cell, therefore young actively dividing cells die more quickly than older, less metabolically active cells. However, eventually a point is reached in which survival of any of the cells is unlikely. The death of a microbial population in response to a technique or chemical agent can be plotted. Death is observed to be logarithmic as time or concentration of the agent is increased. Such a plot allows one to measure the efficacy of an antimicrobial agent. The mode of action or mechanism of action of an antimicrobial agent refers to the manner in which the agent adversely affects cells. Antimicrobial agents may affect cells in one or more ways. Antimicrobial agents may act to target cell walls or cell membranes, or they may interfere with cellular metabolism by causing damage to proteins or nucleic acids. Antimicrobial agents that target cell walls may do so by blocking the synthesis of the cell wall or by breaking it down. Cell walls are responsible for maintaining the structural integrity of the cell. Therefore, as such agents work, they make the cells susceptible to lysis. All cells have cell membranes composed of a phospholipid bilayer with embedded proteins, and some viruses have a phospholipid envelope required by the virus for attachment to host cells. As we saw in Unit 1, the cell membrane acts as a selectively permeable barrier to regulate the movement of molecules into and out of the cell. Disruption of the cell membrane's integrity allows the cellular contents to leak out of the cell, thereby killing it. The same agents that affect the cell membrane will also affect the envelopes of envelope viruses. Destruction of the envelope results in a virus that cannot bind to its host cell, thereby stopping viral replication. Agents that disrupt the envelope of an envelope virus may not affect naked viruses. Naked viruses are more resistant to harsh environmental conditions because they lack an envelope. 
As we have seen this semester, the metabolism of a cell is dependent on the action of enzymes, and most enzymes are protein in nature. We have also seen that the information for the synthesis of proteins is held within the genetic code, which must first be transcribed and then translated to produce proteins. Therefore, the metabolic activity of a cell may be inhibited by causing damage to proteins and nucleic acids. Damage may be caused by heat, chemicals, and radiation. These agents act against the chemical structure by denaturing proteins and nucleic acids.